As Benita pours a jar of kerosene, which is used to fuel the lamp you can see on the table, the viewer can hear off-screen sound of Davy and his wife arguing. The wife feels pressured for having to clean up Davy's mess, while Davy is using his role as the income earner to assert his authority in the home. There is also some frustration due to the lack of money that Davy is making. This begins to illuminate some of the domestic violence that has a statistically high level of incidence in the Indigenous community. It also sheds some light on the pressures felt by women, who during this era were relegated to being homemakers instead of earning an income. Davy's wife, like Eddie's wife later on in the film, experiences frustration as her husband has a tendency to neglect family responsibilities due to the external socio-political pressures he is facing as an Aboriginal man in a discriminatory community. One of these pressures is the lack of income caused by unfair wages or unemployment. Hey, they're at it again. It's getting worse. Go check on them. Go, 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 then. What you doing? Shit. I'm sick of this place. We're all homesick, brother. I'm sick of being me. Well, who do you want to be? Huh? Who do you want to be? Mr. Whitefather Hornibrooker. I want to be you. Reading your dictionary. Talking in the union. Talking big words I never even heard of. You gotta settle down, brother. No! All them say it. On the railway. Koiki's the one. The way Benita calls upon Eddie to act as a peacemaker between Davy and his wife, along with Eddie's comparatively stocky physique, as opposed to Davy's short and somewhat scrawny appearance, sets the stage in a way that Eddie can be perceived as the strong man of the community. The framing also highlights this, where in his altercation with Davy, Eddie faces the camera and takes up most of the frame, while the viewer can only see half of Davy's head, or when the level of the framing is cropped to fit Davy's head and Eddie's shoulders, illuminating his dominant size. Davy's words, I'm sick of this place, and I'm sick of being me, clearly reflects upon the way he feels like less of a man, even less of a human being, in a society that makes him feel like he has no worth as an Indigenous man. Earlier, he scoffed at Eddie's reading, but now he can see how the education Eddie has acquired has given him power in negotiating with the white community. Davy is jealous that Eddie seems to have power and respect among the community, power that he has not personally attained. Hey, you listen to me, brother. You're the only man I got out here. You don't bloody go down. Don't you go down. The way the parallel editing cross cuts to a small hand taking the jar of kerosene while Eddie is still outside trying to placate the conflict occurring also foreshadows the manner in which his family later suffers while he is busy dealing with a federal level conflict in the courtroom. Shaky camera is again used as he pushes back against Davy, and his words, you the only mate I got out here, you don't bloody go down, emphasises that without the support of community members such as Davy, Eddie cannot be a lone success. This concept is further reiterated when Davy took his eye test for him or how the land rights claim would not have succeeded without multiple claimants. Eddie's son ingests some kerosene and screeches. Eddie's face is instantly horrified. While one conflict is being quelled, another rises up and takes its place, as if Eddie's life is constantly in turmoil. To portray intensity and agitation, the moment of Benita hurling the boil up roughly is captured and accompanied by a rising intensity in the non-diegetic soundtrack.
Despite the conflicts between Davy, his wife and Eddie, the rapid cuts during the emergency of Eddie and Benita's son drinking kerosene shows each of the adults rushing to help each other, all rushing to the house and providing advice for the child to be given milk to reduce the burning sensation, screaming for an ambulance, discarding their own domestic quarrels in order to rally to the needs of a community member. This is a testament to the strong community bonds within the Aboriginal community. Doesn't seem to have actually swallowed much, but his throat and the top of his esophagus are badly burned. I'd like to keep him in here for a couple of hours. After that, if he's all right, you can take him home tonight. But the train don't leave until three o'clock in the morning. Get the train tomorrow. Get a cheap hotel tonight, eh? Okay. While at the doctor's, the Marbos are sitting in a submissive position to the doctor who is white. They look at him with discernible vulnerability. Possibly, the director is inserting this to demonstrate the white dominance. The way that the doctor speaks to Eddie and Benita does appear a little cold in that he speaks in short and sharp sentences, lacking in emotion or empathy. This might simply be th that doctor's personality type, or he may feel detached when dealing with these Aboriginal parents because he sees them as inhuman, exacerbated by his potential astonishment that they could allow for their own son to drink kerosene, which is a substance with very similar properties to petrol. No rooms. They reckon it's full. Oh, what? He swallowed kerosene. We need to stop for the night. Go to Jardine tomorrow. Just tonight. Just the night. I'm sorry, love, but we're filled to overflowing tonight. You haven't even got one room? Mm -hmm. Look, we can make do with a single. Well, I'd help you out if I could, but... Yeah. Of course you would. One stinking room. One miserable stinking room. What? They think we're going to leave our black skin on their bloody sheets, sir. Eddie's voice has elements of frustration and cynicism when he says he reckons they're full. His tone suggests that he is wary of the fact these white establishment owners are turning them away because they are indigenous as opposed to venue capacity. When Benita is talking to the white man at a hotel reception, Eddie is rolling his eyes in frustration. Benita doesn't overreact to the scenario because she knows her place, so to speak, and she probably understands that outrage won't fix anything other than exacerbate the negative stereotypes held towards the Indigenous. However, the tone in her response, of course you would, tersely conveys her disapproval of the way she is being treated. The child looks so innocent, showing that even from a young age the Aboriginal people are subject to discrimination. This displays their desperation for anything, anything at all. They are under the power of the white people and have to resolve to pleading and losing dignity. The hotel manager walks away as if uninterested in the conversation. He is neglecting a needy family. Meanwhile, Eddie had to walk outside in order to distance himself because he is less able to maintain cons composure than Benita in such situations. He raises his voice in provocation as he says, what, they think we're going to leave our black skin on their bloody sheets? Not only does this altercation highlight the discrimination towards the indigenous and a lack of human empathy in the white man rejecting even a small, ill child, it also further fuels Eddie's motivation to create change. There is also an additional possibility that the white man at reception did want to help. There is some softness in his tone of voice. However, if an establishment was seen to take in Indigenous or Aboriginal patrons, it would actually jeopardise the possibility of having business from other white people in the community, as they wouldn't want to stay at a hotel that accepts Aboriginal guests. So his actions are not only due to the, the rules put upon him, but also the need to survive as a business person. I don't want to stay here, Neta. I don't want to raise him up in this place.
As the family huddle together in the darkness inside the train station shelter, showing how they are cast out and yet bind together for support, Eddie's words, I don't want to stay here, Netta, I don't want to raise him up in this place, show how Eddie recognises that this society and environment is damaging to the future generations of Aboriginal people, including his own offspring, and something needs to be done. <laughs> 